So yeah, we'll be recording this since it's the very first BTNG community event. For those who don't know me, I'm Philip. I'm a digital designer, design thinking UX expert. And as I said, this is the first BTNG community event. This is a share your work event. So in a few minutes, we will have Wouter here and Wouter is a UX designer at Via Bovag. So he'll be sharing some of his work. Today's session will try to time box it to 45 minutes, meaning we'll have a short presentation of about 20 to 30 minutes during the session. If you have a question, just raise your hand and I will unmute you and you can ask what you want. I will try to keep the presentation to 20 to 30 minutes. So if we'll have more questions than we can, we might save them a little bit for the end. So all questions are welcome. Please feel free to interact as much as you can. Any questions that you have, uh, we'd love to handle them if we are able to answer them. And by the end of the session, if we are not able to <laughs> have answered your question, we have the BTNG community, of course, there is an event page. And on that event page, there's an announcement for this one. And if you'll leave your question there, we will even get back to you after the event. Hello, Wouter. Hey, pardon the delay. <laughs> I am at the campsite and I need to find a spot. Sorry for that. You do look like you are in a very serene, relaxing environment. Nothing. I'm not quite relaxed because this is a first. <laughs> this is a first for the community. So this is going to be cool, but it's nice to see everybody there. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here. And as everyone knows, this is a free open event. I already announced it's the first of the BTNG community. Share your work. And Wouter was as uh, kind enough to say, you know what, I would love to show a bit of my work and tell you all a little bit more about that. So we already did uh, the introductions. Everyone is quite ready for you. Oh, cool. Uh, so we have a nice variation of, of people. Nice. Okay. Can I share my screen? Go ahead, you can. Go ahead. Okay. Hi guys, thanks for participating. My name is Wouter. I'm a Dutch designer, a UX designer at Via Bova. That is a mobility platform. We started out as an automotive platform, but soon we started to do motorbikes, bicycles, and we also do caravans and campers. So anything that's got a wheel, basically uh, you need it. That's the whole idea. And I am the UX designer. I could call myself a lead UX designer, but as I am the only one, it's a bit silly. So, but I do the UX design in a team and we work, we follow Scrum, we have a backlog and then we work with product owners, with marketing, and we basically sit down and say, okay, what we're going to do, what are the propositions, how are we going to make it fly? And then we start sketching, designing, prototyping. I work in Figma and then from there, uh, things go to development and then it goes uh, live. Well, if all goes well. And that's basically uh, in a nutshell. So we work in sprints of two weeks and the uh, teams is six people, some of course developers, and then each team has got one front ender. And then both teams are um, sort of overviewed. Uh, there's one product owner for the two teams. And in that way uh, we worked together. And then the PO and I, we sit down and go through the backlog and decide what design goes live when and when it, and it, when it is in line with uh, propositions. Cool. So you have plenty, uh, plenty of stakeholders to deal with. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. I have plenty of stakeholders to deal with. Yes. And they pop up everywhere where you don't expect it. I find new stakeholders and uh, that is very challenging. It means I've learned a lot of languages, not just in coding, but if Sometimes you talk more than you design and uh, that can be quite a challenge because sometimes you, you get to the point where you think, why don't you get it? But <laughs> you, you, can't, you can't just turn around and say that, of course. But, so you constantly have to put, the, uh, put yourself in their position and think, okay, why is it? What else can I come up with that really makes you understand the needs and the reason why we're doing it the way we're doing it? Exactly. Uh, and I can imagine you, you mentioning those stakeholders popping up from every corner. Is that also why you're trying to flee to a campsite to, to get away from the product to get away. for the weekend? Yeah. Or? No, <laughs> this is mental health. Uh, I've got two kids and a wife and we are, we've got a spot to the campsite. So then it, it's all quiet and everybody's happy. Uh, nice. And I've noticed it's really it's good to work in nature, fresh air, lots of sunshine. So it's nice. <laughs> 
So that's I, really yeah. helpful. I, I see someone from Colorado nodding his head. You're, mm. I, I'm certain that more people are are sharing that experience. Yeah. So yeah, for today, I know you've prepared yeah. a few things. I know the design system are one of the things that you want to want to talk about. Do you have a starting point for your for your content? For my content. I or where does do. your story begin? <laughs> yeah, no, yeah I'm just thinking how it just started because of course I do. But then the question is, where do you start? But if one of the somewhere along the line in business or marketing or but uh, there is a new desire for a proposition. So say we're going to sell cars with five wheels uh, and that's a good idea. Then uh, so there's a kickoff, of course, and then we sit down. Um, and then um, we talk about it, we uh, do CMEC, we ask the five whys to make sure that you really have the, 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 the right questions and the right answers. And then you start designing, uh, which is basically sketching, wireframing, and, and then you share that. So you discuss it, is this what we have agreed, or is this what we've talked about? Seven out of 10, it's never, because people, as soon as people see something visually, I've learned, people get different ideas. So even though, it's the same thing you've talked about. As soon as they see it in black and white, they start to realize that's not what they actually wanted. So then you have to start <laughs> all over again. I find that very interesting and trying to manage that as, as best as possible. And then you continue. And in every phase, there is something. And even when the product owner says, okay, I understand your design. There's quite a few times when it's, uh, the development hasn't got clue or they have extra questions or certain stages need to be further designed. And then of course it, it is all to do with, is it in scope? Yes or no. How much time is available to develop all these states? And if you need more time, of course, that pushes the boundaries a bit. Um, so that's, and within, that's the... with it, with it, that process that you go through, would you say there were, or there are specific challenges at some point that you decided that this would be a part of? There are always challenges, especially when you have to rely on third parties that you have no control over their agenda. And so you're waiting for their input. That's sometimes challenging. And there's also when you, you, you present it. So I, the way I do it is that I show it on a small scale and then I take it to a bigger, to a higher level and say, okay, I now need to have everybody's consent. So I invite all the, st the stakeholders and I do that as early as possible, but then all of a sudden it's a different, there's some extra input or there is some extra criteria that were not put in the initial backlog file. So you realize quite quickly that you need to update what you're working with. So that's one thing. So that's the whole logistic point of view. And then of course, from a design system point of view is that you already have all your elements. You have your input field, you, you've got your buttons and all those elements. And then you start to, you, you put your wireframe together. And once that's all right, you start to work on a prototype and putting everything together in Figma. And then either you, along the way, you suddenly discover that this is something that's used on a different page as well. But for this specific proposition, it needs changing and it needs yeah. to be exceptions and <laughs> needs to be altered. Then you have to implement that as well. So sometimes a design can deviate a little bit because of the already existing components. I've been in situations where I designed something and I thought, oh, this is really nice. I did my user research, people liked it, it got an eight out of 10 until one of the developers said, yes, but uh, this component deviates from this component on this page. So therefore what we're we going to do. Mm -hmm. So then all of a sudden I had to talk tech and talk to my developer and see how we can make it work for us both. Those are interesting things. It also means that you need to decide for this platform, we have certain pages that are very regular page, basic pages like guarantees, what are we, all the warrants, uh, vehicle information pages. Uh, those are very similar pages for uh, all the cars and don't change much. But if you are have you a composition- Are you talking about certain page templates? Yeah, then in, in a way for a vehicle, you can do a, a, a detailed template and say, okay, this template we use for all the vehicles. We have a template that we use for all the warranties, the guarantees, or the legal parts is also a different template. But if you want to create a bit of a more unique experience, because it's a new proposition, you can win something or share and do this, then you need to think, can we use our components in a different way? And then of course, I find myself talking to development because they like to be challenged as well. And my, fr including the front enders and the team is committed. So that's really nice. So when I say, look, I'm going to design this, how does that work for you? Given what we already have, it, it always works in the end. 
yeah, they're very happy to think along, ask critical questions. And, and that I, I find it really. Would you say that would be one of the key takeaways from your experience with building a design system or not only building, designing a design system and actually putting it into the real world that the communication with development is a must have from day one or? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I have it put a few slides together. I'm already deviating from the way I thought I would do it, but we can skip the definition of a design system because it's, I follow Nielsen, but that, that's what I do. I talk a lot to developers and I have one, uh, two developers, front-end developers, who I actually have given access to my Figma file as an editor versus the versus view only, because that sometimes you are busy doing other things and it, sometimes it's helpful if a front-ender is able to tweak it just a little bit. It's, it's not, yes, pixel perfect is a nice concept, but it's not always <laughs> realistic. And to make sure that you still speak the same language, it's sometimes helpful if front-end can adjust certain elements, of course, only after we've discussed it. Because in that way, they experience ownership over design. They understand the design. I always talk to them in terms of not only what it needs to do in terms of responsiveness, but also why I want to do it and in what way I want my user to experience a certain feeling or go from A to B in, in as little steps as possible. Yeah. You, uh, you just mentioned uh, letting go of the pixel perfect uh, ideology. It reminds me of a couple of years ago when pixel perfect was like really the, some sort of badge Holy of grail. honor or yeah, exactly. Yeah. The, the must have, yeah. uh, when you said it, I, I got thinking about the component part, would you then say that it would at this point in time, be more valuable to have things as reusable components than having them pixel perfect yeah. at the get go. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes I have to do it quick and dirty and I don't have m the time that I normally would spend on, on creating something. And then that's when, why I have a developer that is that, that has access to the file itself as an editor. Uh, okay. And sometimes you can really sit on your grid and go, okay, step one, step two, and it's a lot more structured. The pixel perfect, I, I wish I could do pixel perfect, but... I've had so many discussions with front-end developers who yeah. one really laughed in my face and said, are you silly? It's not gonna, I don't, I, my, as a front-end developer, don't believe in it. And others were very strict. So it's a bit of give and take, but what is most important is that it is responsive, that it follows and honors the grid that we use and that it is quickly for us. It's also important to go like quick to market. So if we can minimize, that's always very valuable. Definitely. Yeah. And I can imagine if you do have those components and those components are actu actually implemented, that when you do get at a point in time where you like, where you can actually fudge around with the pixels uh, in a mm -hmm. way that yep. you're already solving it in every place. So that, yeah, that usability is definitely, yeah. or yeah, reusability is definitely, definitely key. Uh, well, a few more people uh, entered uh, the conversation, entered the call, uh, very much welcome. If you do have a question, feel free to raise your hand and uh, we'll gl gladly jump you in. Sorry, continue out. Yeah. When I started, there was a library, but the compo it wasn't component based. It was only elements. And then, so there was actually hardly any design system in place. And then slowly but surely uh, you move from components and your design system starts to take shape. So that was a big push. And then this year. We really started to work in, in, in components and say, okay, we, if we are going to construct, come up with new pages, how can we do that the most efficient way and the most manageable way? We then talked with the marketing department for their wishes. And then we talked to the, the and, and in combination with development, and then we cre created a structure. It's a bit like WordPress in a way, it's sorry, but it does help uh, where we basically said, what kind of a page would you like it to do you need? So you have a couple of varieties and within each variety, you have basically a number of items that you could pull from. You can do a hero and it has a certain look and feel. You can do a list that has a certain look and feel. Do you want it with an icon? Yes or no. And all those things are settings that they can then themselves choose from. So in the end, the components become very manageable for the developers and the and marketing department is actually really, they can focus on what they like to do most and that's create pages for more content and to enrich the site. Yeah. Makes yeah. everybody happy. So that's great, uh, great example of gathering those requirements. And I think the example of when you're talking to marketing about WordPress pages, it's yeah. 
puts them in a mindset that they would probably yeah understand and can digest yeah. from okay hey, this would be the things that i want yeah yeah and then they can it's sometimes you need to look for an allergy but that's how they can they understand what how they need to interpret the word components because it's for us it may be really walk in the park but and then we have to as a number of stakeholders this is number 14 and then you take back to them and then you have to translate it into a language that they understand and they can process for themselves and so they need to feel that all their needs are are listened to and basically now part of the new component system developers themselves they we are looking into working more and more with storybook we've started with it on a very low scale but we need to my idea is to work more with it so we can Easy, more easily identify all the, the corner edges or the edge cases and the weird things that happen with breakpoints and what to do at certain uh, moments. So that's then the next step uh, to make sure that we have one online environment where we could say, okay, we have got, this is designed, this is what it looks like in code, is that what you want? And then we can quickly, it helps us in developing components much more quicker. Awesome. Yeah, that, that makes sense. And for those who don't know Storybook, it might be that not everyone knows it. Do you want to tell a little bit uh, in short what Storybook is? Yes, I can, but I don't know whether I will do it the justice <laughs> it deserves if I put it properly. But most of the people here are designers, I, I believe. So I, if, if there might be one or two <laughs> developers so who not feel defending but, anybody. Uh, yeah. no, just, uh, it's fine. No, but it's it's an online environment you can run it locally and you can run it on a on a host but it allows all your code you can hook it up to figma but it allows all your components to live in a basically in in a online library and it allows you to uh, developers front-end developers it's a front-end developers tool and they have a quick access to the, your component they can see how it behaves what the edge cases are, and if they need to make changes for it, they can. it's easy to share that with designers or marketing department and say, hey, this is where it goes wrong, what do you want us to do at this level or this breakpoint, instead of them talking about it, because as soon as you visualize stuff, it becomes much more easy to, to digest and to, to think about. So it's yeah. an online repository. Is that the, the right way to describe it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, especially the get it in the browser part. Yeah, yeah the, the way yeah. things behave in, in, in Figma versus in a browser, even different types of browsers. Yeah, as well. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, we will park that one there because yeah. otherwise... Uh, oh, we'll it's def- going to be a long story, <laughs> long evening. Yeah, no, we want yeah. to have happy feeling when we go into the weekend and crack open that yeah. first cold brewski. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, go ahead. I believe you have a couple of tips for the people here. Yeah, then I can do a tip before I do something else. I've got two, t- three tips, of course. And the first one is talk and share. I've noticed that as soon as you start talking, people start to understand you far better, easier. And they also have, have experienced is that they start to think, they start to think along with you. So the more you involve them, the more they started to think along and they can already foresee certain issues and they can help you or you can help them tackling them together. So that I really like. And I see that as a learning. Sometimes it's easy to say, oh, I'm designing, so please let me be. I'm in my zone. Don't interrupt. But the more you basically pull people in, the more it becomes a shared product. And once it's shared, um, mm-hmm. and you start to cover angles that you haven't thought of. So that was a learn that. And of course, tip number two is don't tell everything, but that's a bit of a, jo- <laughs> that's a bit of a joke. Sorry. <laughs> Couldn't help myself, but, um, no, the, and I haven't put that near one, one down, but something else that I've learned along the way is that uh, you need to be aware uh, and prepare for it that no matter how well you've designed stuff and how much blood, sweat and tears and midnight hours are in there, it's always, as soon as you've designed it, it's wrong by definition. And so basically I've turned it around for myself. And if I don't hear anybody, then I'm, if everybody goes, yeah, really nice, well done, job, good. Go on, let's go continue, move forward. That's when I'm worried. I'm no longer worried when people criticize my work, whether they don't like 
the font or whatever, any design element. I don't care about that. I'm happy with feedback in, in that sense. But as soon as they start to cheer, then that's when I start to panic <laughs> because <Yeah. laughs> I know that's not what's supposed to happen. So yeah, yeah. Just, and don't let that put you off. I know that in, in the beginning, it made me a bit uncertain and then you start to read on, on this imposter syndrome and I thought, you know what, in a way that's rubbish. I know what I've done. We've talked about product yeah. owner, developer, market, everybody that needed to be involved is involved. So why would I feel this way? There's no reason to feel this way. And in a way it started to re to see it as a compliment. If people start to comment on it, people disagree. It means that it creates an effect. It, yeah. it has an effect on people. And that's in a way what you want to do, because in the end, any design that you make will have people go and say, I like it. Or you have people who don't like it for whatever reason. So oh, as long as uh, it is on brand, of course. We have a question from Peter. I think hey. uh, yeah, good that's, to go. It's, that's an interesting topic because um, it made me wonder if you have people who are silent when you're showing your designs, what are the questions that you ask to make sure that people get talking? You know, it's very easy to just show your design and then everybody mm -hmm. looks great, right? Yeah, so what do I do? How do you do that? Basically, I show the design first and I tell a little story about why it is that it is the way, it, why does it look, why does it look like this and what are we trying to achieve? Then I will start, for example, example that I started with the car with five wheels. So marketing wants to, to promote cars with five wheels. So then I say, look, we've done it because of these reasons. We've done research and what I find out is that the more you explain, the more people start to think about it. So if I take just a minute and say, here's my design, what do you think? People will say, of course, it looks nice because they don't want to be unkind towards you and you've put a lot of effort in it. When you start to tell the story behind it, that's when people start to realize, hang on a minute. And then it slowly but surely, it starts to turn into questions and these questions then uh, will, they will start answer, answer, uh, asking questions. If that doesn't work, I know that there are always, in my group, there will always be people who are a bit more expressive and who don't find it a problem if I would reach out and say, hey, Peter, you've seen the designs. Can you tell me to what extent does these designs fulfill your needs? And then you would give me an answer. I could use you as a starting point and then go to, sorry, Gertjan, and then I could go to Gertjan and say, hey, Gertjan, so could you let me know? Can you, is that all right with you, what Peter just uh, talked about? Or is there stuff that you're missing or does it match? And then Gertjan would start to warm up and feel comfortable enough to share his thoughts. And it would, in, in that sense, you would create an, an atmosphere for all type of people, whether you are the, the quiet one or uh, the loud, well, loud one, and then they all feel comfortable enough to start talking. Does that help? <laughs> Makes sense. But does it help? I was also thinking when mm -hmm. you mentioned that when people are not talking about it, I was also thinking that mm -hmm. if you work with developers and you're mm -hmm. building a design system and they're not talking about it, <laughs> then they're not using it. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I think it's also like a sign of an adoption problem, perhaps. Yeah. Uh, it, it might be a bit of a different direction than the conversation you just had with Peter, but it's definitely a, an interesting one. I can okay, go ahead. stop sharing. I'm sharing this screen. I'm sharing my, I don't know whether I'm sharing Figma or whether I'm just showing, sharing this. We see all your Figma windows. Oh, brilliant. And then you can see what I'm working on. Oh, that's good. So. For example, if there are more questions, I'm happy to answer them after I've done this. Is that okay? Um, I have got, this is what my design system roughly looks like, because bear in mind, design system is never finished. Just when you think you're done, you find a better way of doing it and you go, okay, let's do this again. Now, how am I going to convince my stakeholders that I really need time to do an overall of my design system? But that's a different discussion. So I've got all my color card like that, visually labeled for myself, all the colors that I have, it's visualized and I've split it basically into very fine structured because you start with words that we use in the way we talk about our brand and I've listed the ones that we most use. Then I've got a list of items that are, we have used and the, the ones that we are moving towards. And yes, we are working with Next as our developers to do. So then we are developing 
well, uh, migrating all the existing components into the next. I, I think, sorry to interrupt you. I think this yeah. is a really, a really useful thing to keep in mind that there are so many UI elements and especially yeah. if you're working on an existing application, it's totally different than, you know what, there's nothing and you will have a year to build your design system and then we will build that exact design system. That's in my 15 years, mm -hmm. I haven't encountered mm -hmm. that once. So being able to communicate, well, hey, some of these elements, UI elements or components, some are ready and yeah. some are actually implemented. These things we haven't even touched upon. So I think yeah. that's an interesting one to point out. Yeah. Because that's, thanks, because that's, yeah, sometimes you forget when you're the only one, then it's sometimes good to, to, to hear these extra thoughts, because that's what happens is that you talk to your development and go, I, I use it in my, but in the back of your head, that there's still some work that needs being, that needs doing with regards to your component. Then I have my components. So basically I've got an alphabet and lay them all out accordingly. Everybody's got buttons. So this is what my. Uh, all the buttons that we use with an icon, yes or no, larger font, yes or no. I use, I work in Figma, so I've got my variants in Figma, and then you, you work from there to move this to the side. So you can see on the right side, I've got my text styles, styles developed, set up for when I do a PowerPoint, if I do wireframes, if I do desktop, if I do mobile. So this is how I set it up. And of course, you will need to come up with a way that works for you. So this is just how I do it. Then I've got my colors. These are the brand colors for Bovach. Then I've got my navigation colors. Then I have got my CTA, et cetera, et cetera. I use one type of drop, drop shadow. So I've created the base for basic for that. I use some grids as uh, people do. And that is all this, I call them my design system. I have some organisms in place because they're too complex because there's so much going on. I use it and this will grow in time as well. As mentioned earlier, sometimes you think I need to do it in a different way. Then, and of course, your design system starts to change a little bit. And after that, I have got, do you all see this? I need yes. to, okay, that's good. So in Figma, I have on a column that has all my individual vehicles. Then I have my propositions and I have sub pages because I think those are not the same. But what I do have, what I'd like to show you here is that I have personas, I have a style guide, I have online elements, I have offline elements, and I've got the website. And basically that's an overview of what the website then looks like. I've split it in two sections. One I call really the core and one I see as brand. And in design and in the core, I have design system, my icons, my wireframes, and then I have my templates. So I use a separate file for my icons and I draw them in when I need. And then I have a oh. <laughs> About a quick, quick, honest question of interest from my side. I noticed that you had that wireframe there. Is that like your design system for wireframes or where you have your wireframe components or do you actually wireframe products in that file? Oh, sorry. Yes, I can share that with you because here I have a wireframes for certain type of pages. So I don't wireframe a component as such. I know it takes slow for loading, but I have here, for example, you know, how roughly design will have to follow this. This is what it oh, okay. used to look like. This is old design. So now we're moving towards a different design. So what does it look like on a higher level? And this will then be picked up and get a proper design. So here I have those. So if everybody and anybody would say, look, let's create a new landing page. What would it look like? So you always have the same origin. Got it. Thank you. This is also because what if I'm ill or on holiday or what if there's always an if, and I'd like it that, because this is how I would like it as, as myself, that there's always uh, a starting point from where you could create things. If you start afresh, or maybe I get an intern, or maybe we work with freelancers, they all need to know where to start. Got it. I have my templates. I will show you home. And this is how I set things up. I have a home. It's got a desk, it's got desktop where you see the different states. And these pages I will use as templates for my other pages because I want, I've got cars and we want consistency throughout the website. So 
this page for cars, because it's our largest part of our website, will be working as a template for others. So for bicycles, for motorbikes, and then of course we will update the content to the right vehicle type. So I, I have quite a few files and combined, that is the system, but, and certain people have certain access rights to it. This I don't share with people. I don't, they can, well, share it with you, but you can have a look at it, but it is not something that, that I give people access to in terms of edit rights. So no, no, no touchy, <laughs> no, no, kijk, kijk niet kopen. So yeah, so, so that's the thing. And I don't want awesome. to, I, I don't, this is basically very important to me because this is where I keep track of if every, is everything on brand. And if people start to faff in this file, we could potentially have a problem. So got it. Wouldn't want that. Yeah, that's, that's uh, yeah, that's really awesome. I think uh, you've covered uh, a, a lot of different topics, and I think I can uh, speak for most of us when I say mm -hmm. it's really cool to have a look in the kitchen, see what uh, what the Wouter is cooking. Yeah. Uh, like I said, we've touched on so many uh, topics, and uh, first of all, I really want to thank you for uh, for your time and guiding us through this. But I also wanted to give the people here in the call some opportunities for questions because I know it's uh, we're officially in our forty five minutes now. I just wanted to check in with everyone. I know some people are actually working on design systems and or getting ready to implement a new design system. Ooh, so okay. I was actually wondering. And I will leave a moment of silence after my question, if there are any questions. So I'd love to hear if there are any questions in the call. And I believe actually a little birdie told me about it, that we have a colleague of yours here as well. A colleague of mine? Crap. <laughs> Who is that? <laughs> Who is that? That's going to be cool. Tell me. That's going to be cool. Oh, wait, I will also give Ruben the chance to uh, reveal the mystery <laughs> guest. <laughs> yes. Necessary. <laughs> no, just kidding. Lo love to put people on the spot. Mm. <laughs> no problem. Uh, no problem. Ruben, how was this for you? Are you seeing, hearing new things or? No, luckily not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, luckily not. Let's have an <laughs> offline meeting, Ruben. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's it's been a while uh, since I've uh, in detail viewed uh, uh, about this work, but I'm, uh, I'm glad he uh, has uh, built a system he always wanted to build, along with uh, all the feature wishes uh, we have for Wouter. So it's good to see. Thanks. Awesome. Cool. And uh, yeah, glad, uh, glad to have you. This birdie has a question, I see. Oh, yes, I see that as well. And I will give a birdie a... Birdie? Am I the birdie? Yes, you're the birdie. <laughs> okay. What, one question, actually two questions. I saw one page, actually nice and nice presentation. Nice to see you in the person between quotes. And we have some <laughs> questions in the comments on LinkedIn. Now I saw one page, which I'm curious about what was on that page on your Figma, which says uh, UX is like a joke. I would like to see what's on that page. I know what's, what the actual joke is. I know what usually mm -hmm. follows behind it, but I'm just curious what was on that page. Oh, you, I can share that with you. you you'll because have to pay extra for it. It's probably about if you have to explain it, it's not good enough, etc. But Yep. <laughs> uh, I did missed that. See it? <laughs> these, these inside jokes, which are always interesting to see. But where did you see? Oh, you saw it in my file structure. Yeah. Your Here. file structure. It, it, yeah. Yeah, because you can set this up in the left column. You can set this up in Figma any way you want, because basically these are all, this is a list of favorites, but I actually did it to deviate between the groups of content. So actually <laughs> this is just a placeholder uh, and it's actually, there's nothing there. Okay, so okay. That's a please have a look and it's a reminder for myself. Yeah. And I will give Craig an opportunity for his question. Craig, are you? I'm here. Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah, perfect and clear. All right. Awesome stuff. So Thank my you. quick question was uh, basically, so I see a lot of systems based on templates and how you design things and how you structure. When you do these things and pass them on to the other things, is this because you've tested these systems enough that you feel that it provides the proper UX and UI for your client developers and it's an easier system to follow 
or do you do it because it's a good starting point? Yeah, that's a good one. Mm. I think I know what my answer will be because I am the one, the only one, and because I talk a lot to my developers, I prefer to do it this way to say, okay, I have a template and it trickles down. So every single step I am in control and it needs to follow a certain grid structure and how certain things behave, we discuss together. I have certain certain ideas, then the front-end developer has certain ideas of how things can work together. And that's something we, I do create prototypes, but only click through. I don't really do the transitions because that's something that is A, difficult to do, and B, it changes a lot in times. And then you talk to your developer who says, basically, I've got a better idea, or why don't we do it this way? Or And then there's a discussion which is good by the way. And maybe I've got some OCD, but it helps me to keep the structure intact and say, okay, I have a page, a vehicle page for a car, and it has all these individual elements. I can- uh, So it's more of a roadmap basic is what you're yeah. saying. Look, this is what I have as a search result page. You've done, this is, you've, we've got this many fake data, of course, but we got this many cars that we found for you. And this got a structure, this structure, um, follows a certain um, components you can see here in the side it, it has it's got popular models and you can see with the square that it is a component and the component itself is a part of something else which is in itself part of the design system so that i want to keep things as strict as possible and if things need to change you need to be you need to have that flexibility to to understand that certain things change but a component itself should be static if you may call it like that does that help absolutely cool thanks if if i may as an as an addition on that i think it's also really useful to have if you have an element for example in a news feed scroller or whatever and you use it on multiple places you don't want mm -hmm. to redesign it everywhere yeah. So you're also saying, okay, we're building this once and we can actually reuse it, but it'll work and yeah. look the same everywhere. Yeah, uh, uh, that's also, um, I, I also do variants in, in regards to what you just said, is that I've got an element and on one part it's blue and at one other page it's green, for example, and it's still the same component, but it is its behavior is based on where it lives and uh, that's how I uh, deal with it. I believe we uh, have a question from Kuwait. <laughs> Mohammed, how are you? Hey, hello. Good. Philip, good time. hello, hi, how are you? I, I'm sorry, I'm not a designer. Um, mm -hmm. Actually, get, I got caught in design because I started a company and Philip was the first initial designer to work on it. And it's working until now, Everything, everybody loves it. I know this is a subject right now about design system, but I just want to... I just want to take this opportunity to ask a question that is related to me, at least from the stage. It's regarding the usability testing. My question is, since you, are, uh, you have a great experience in designing and you are a lead UX designer, what would be the dynamic between the lead designer and uh, the project manager and the customer in terms of usability testing? Nice one. Thank you. Because that's an area I haven't said anything about. But of course, we don't put anything live until we've tested it. So we have a thought, an idea, a concept, we turn it into a design. And then in this case, I use Usability Hub. Corona has prevented us from actually inviting people into the office and ask them these questions. So I use this online tool um, and then I can conduct my survey and ask them all kinds of questions. So I can do A-B testing. I can show them the prototype with a task. And in that way, I get feedback. I share that with my product owner. And then we both decide what of the feedback we are going to uh, implement or ignore. Do you also have like research ahead of time where you're more like investigating things that you don't know yet and afterwards testing ideas? Are those separate things to you? When I, for example, when we get the request for designing a car with five wheels, then basically somebody has discovered a fit in the a market fit. And then we know that it is, they don't, they wouldn't ask it if they didn't believe in it, but I have never designed cars with five wheels. So what I will do is then talk to them. And I also look for other examples in the market. Is this the first concept? Have others done it before? What did they run into and learn from that and take that with me when designing? 
Got it. Great, guys. It's uh, five to five. I am going to uh, to end the uh, end the call and wish everyone a very good weekend or enjoy their Friday afternoon drinks. Thank you all so much for coming. Once again, if you still have questions or would like to ask out a question in the BTNG community, there is an event page. And within that event page, you will see this event. In there, we'll also uh, share a recording. And if you have any questions, you can ask them there. And uh, I'm sure Wouter will be kind enough to answer them. So I, I'd really love to love to hear and know if you enjoyed this session, if you were missing anything, if you have any feedback for us on what you'd like to improve or would like to do next, I'd love to hear it. Thank you all for your presence, Wouter. Thank you for your time and sharing your knowledge. And uh, hopefully pleasure. we'll see you next time. Okay, thank you very much. Cool. Have a great weekend, everybody. Take care. Bye. Take care. Thank mm -hmm. you.